Ooh, it's it's touchy. Okay, no quick shifter. In the uh, S1000XR, there was pulse compared to that. I think this is like at a next level of vibration. Yeah, the, the quick shifter is not there and the power obviously is the biggest difference. Ooh, so it just, the rear wheel just skidded. All right, so this is a 2018. Suzuki V-Storm 1000 XT. This 2018, they made some improvements to the horsepower. Like they gave the traction control, ABS, uh, even in the previous generations. But with this one, they added uh, cornering ABS and cornering traction control. A much more relaxed seating position. And uh, you know, my my uncle is the one who's a big V-Storm fan. He's always had a V-Storm in the past, I would say, 15, 16 years, and even now he does one. He does have one, despite having other bikes. And uh, that's his bike of long, lo long route travel. So this bike, out of the box, is more comfortable. Obviously, it's a V-Twin versus that inline 4 that the S1000XR has. It has a little bit more vibration. But I am only doing 70 right now in 71, and I can uh, I can feel the wind moving the bike around a little. Uh, I just in the same conditions of a little while ago test rode the S1000 XR BMW 2016, and I really had to be mindful keeping it under 100. It does have a better windshield for sure, but uh, overall stability of that S1000XR was at a next level. I think part of the reason why this is shimmying around more, and it's a little bit windier today, I guess it's the design of the panniers. The panniers in this are those aluminum big ones and uh, I've never found them to be very pleasing uh, on the highways. And you do need panniers, but look, I mean, this bike is, I would not fault it for anything. Its torque band is a lot better than the last generation that I rode. It is actually very, very torquey. 6 gear, six, uh, 77 miles an hour. So it's not an inline Ford like the S S1000R. This is a bigger displacement, but it's a V-twin. Uh, but look, I mean, overall, I think that S1000SR, uh, XR is the bike. Uh, and I rode it for, uh, I think, 100 miles or plus miles uh, on one of our trips. Uh, that was a 2015 model which is very similar to this except this has just some better technology and I think the shifting is a little bit smoother in this um, sounds good I, I, I really like the way V-twin is V-twin sound is uh, tuned on this this one is a little bit higher than the XR but I like the gauge cluster actually I <laughs> that bike was so much fun I didn't even pay attention to what the gauge cluster had but looking at the gauge cluster of this uh, XT model uh, V-Storm 1000 I like it uh, it's it's still old school but it has every bit of information right there in front of me I don't have to dig through anything um, I don't know if it has any modes but uh, this particular model in 2018 they updated the engine and I think they raised the horsepower from 87 to 99 and uh, the torque also of, of a few foot pounds I think from uh, 68 or 69 foot pounds to 76 or 75 foot pounds something like that it has a different character and I uh, it's a very relaxed riding bike which is what I'm looking for overall and it comes with crash bars and everything else and it's uh, 
thousand dollars cheaper than that 2016 XR. So it's a tough call. Even though it does have a good top end, it's just not as beefy. But this more uh, this this bike feels a little bit more substantial. Um, even though the XR is supposedly heavier than this. Uh, but this feels more substantial, um, meaning um, even in riding, I would say the XR felt much lighter than this. And uh, substantial, I use the word because this feels uh, uh, really solid on the road, especially at lower speeds. Uh, and lower speed maneuvering, uh, uh, as much as I can tell with this short ride, is better in the XR. So overall, this is actually feeling more like an adventure bike than the XR. Uh, but when I shift my focus a little bit on adventure uh, or touring, adventure touring bike capability, then uh, I think XR is definitely the winner. Uh, generally, XR is com uh, compared with the Multistrada Ducati. And I never, it was never on my radar, uh, but um, now it is. And both bikes uh, are a little bit old school. I don't know, I like this bike very much, this V-Storm 2018. But at lower RPMs, I mean, the, uh, the seat vibration specifically is a little bothersome to me. So now I have to be in fourth gear in, at 34 miles an hour, because if I put it in third, it's a constant buzz. And I can understand it on the handlebars, which is uh, very controllable. At the handlebars, it's not that bad. But uh, on the seat, in this, uh, it's just, it's just uh, very annoying. The other thing is, uh, the controls on this bike out of the box, I don't know, maybe the, the adjustments on that bike were made by the previous owner. But uh, it's like my reach to the clutch lever and specifically um, the front brake is effortless, uh, effortless on this. Where on the XR at, at the current adjustment levels that it has, I had to reach out a little. So I like the overall weather protection wind protection is one thing but the overall weather protection I think they both are very similar but I for some reason I feel that this may be a little better but look I mean I was riding that XR much faster than this and uh, the stability was the main reason and the way that bike felt was the main reason why I was able to do so in this, I'm not sure if I want to go over 75 miles or, or an hour, especially with the panniers on or 80 miles an hour. Um, and I'm sure it has to do with my skill levels and the bike's capability, but it doesn't inf inspire enough confidence to me to actually try to give it a shot. Now, once you buy a bike, you get used to it and then you feel more comfortable. So, because my uncle rides it like a sports bike. that's that's where I know that this bike is capable. Uh, I need to get to that level. But XR, that's what makes it dif different. That I never rode that bike before either. And I got on it and that thing was just ready to roll. The only thing is that bike is just ready to lift if you're not careful. Even though it has really control and everything else. So, so you know, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but the shifting is just no competition. The gear shifter in XR is a dream. I think I think probably the best. So it's a tough call, man. I mean, I wish I could just have everything, you know, uh, every bike. That can't happen, so I have to choose. And if I have to choose, then uh, it seems like it's, it's going to be the XR. Let's see how it turns out. The difference is the overall suspension. This is very well 
uh, tuned for all conditions but uh, the XR has that dynamic ESA dynamic uh, uh, electronic stability assist or something whatever they call it. Uh, that thing is phenomenal uh, the way you can just on the fly with a push of a button change the suspension settings uh, and mappings of the engine uh, it just once you get used to it it's just uh, uh, it just becomes that much more important in your list of things to have uh, I would probably put the handlebar risers on both of them so see that's the thing where this starts giving up around six seven thousand rpm xr <laughs> just keeps going nose dive did uh, uh, in this in this bike right so if you are in an emergency situation and you press the front brake aggressively you better watch out the engine power delivery is very good in this don't get me wrong it just feels like the engine is working when it's delivering power to you uh, versus the XR it feels like the engine is just effortlessly getting to its full potential and uh, one thing I really value a lot that is better on this bike is the engine braking. It seems like because of the V-twin character, a big V-twin, a bigger V-twin I would say, uh, the engine braking is, is definitely more aggressive in this and I, I kind of like it. Then the low RPM torque, uh, even though it's more noticeable in this maybe because uh, the, the torque band is, is not as linear as the XR but I never in my ride felt that uh, it was it was lacking power in at any RPM levels XR has a wider tire for sure and uh, has no protection that I might have to get for the XR this one does come with the uh, protection bars as well as both come with the luggage uh, everything is just more I guess sleek in the S1000R both do not have the LED headlights which I'm gonna have to upgrade because uh, I really after using those I think those are a godsend uh, this one comes with heated grips built in uh, V-Storm doesn't come with that. Uh, this one also has the electronic suspension as I mentioned before. Then it does have the dampening and uh, uh, electronic suspension settings right here at the, ta at the tap. Uh, it does have better integration of the panniers as well as the top box. Uh, top, top box. Suzuki key will not open it for sure. The top box seems quite small but I'm, I'm sure you know anything can help the, and the other thing the other thing uh, you like that one? yeah man I think uh, I think a decision is made now you tell me well, what do you want to do all right viewers if you like this video please share and subscribe and stay tuned for more thank you so much